Are Canada's universities still bastions for free speech and free inquiry? Or are they now places where independent thought and diverse ideas go to die? For decades, there's been little question about the ideological leanings of Canada's post-secondary institutions, with the vast majority of academics holding decidedly left-wing views. But for the most part, that inherent bias did not extend to the outright suppression of those who disagreed until recently. As the rise of cancel culture propelled by a vocal and aggressive minority has led to administrators being fired, professors censored or forced into early retirement, free-thinking students shouted down in class, and student-led events being outright canned, all for simply expressing contrarian views or even just being open to debate them on everything from race relations to climate change to grade 9 biology. They even canceled one of my events here at UVic where I was supposed to speak on the importance of the coastal gas link pipeline, not exactly the most contentious issue. But that's besides the point. To the activists, academics, and bureaucrats pushing this agenda, simply holding a belief that contradicts their own is unacceptable, a form of so-called microaggression, a violation of their quote-unquote safe space, an invasion of the imaginary world they created in their own mind, where their views would never be confronted and their rhetoric never questioned. To them, the free exchange of ideas is not a creed to live by, but a threat to their religious-like adherence to a radical ideology. Which is why it's so important that as universities everywhere expand their diversity, inclusion, and equity efforts, they protect the most important kind of diversity, that of thought, belief, and viewpoint both within the student body and among professors and other staff as well, including those like Ontario academic Deborah So, who was forced to abandon her university career so she could continue talking freely about issues relating to her field. Fortunately, some of our elected officials are beginning to fight back perhaps most surprisingly in Quebec, where Premier Francois Legault has promised action to protect free speech on campuses and decried the radical activists and their campaigns of intimidation. This is an issue that must be a red line for every Canadian. For if students aren't free to express themselves, to explore and debate opposing views, how can they evolve as individuals? How can they accumulate real knowledge and form their own opinions? How can they develop their own unique identities? How can they be genuinely educated? The answer is they can't. And if that happens, it won't just be the individuals, but society that pays the price. For the C2C Journal, my name is Aaron Gunn. Thanks for watching.